For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around Now the Spirit of the Lord is here The atmosphere is changed For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around Now the Spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love, your love Surround us You're the reason we came To encounter your love Your love surrounds us The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around Now the Spirit of the Lord is here the the atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord. Please pardon this interruption. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mara, and I am the Parish Alpha Coordinator. Welcome to Mass on this third Sunday of Easter. And a special welcome to our visitors or those who haven't been with us for a while, we are happy that we can gather to worship today. For those who are joining us online, a welcome wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us in worship. Today, we have the great joy of witnessing Conrad Savraj Young, son of Ravina and Conrad Young, receiving the sacraments of initiation. Ravina herself will also be receiving her sacraments of initiation. Congratulations and a very warm welcome to any friends or family members who are here today. Today is also Name Tag Sunday, a wonderful opportunity for us to get to know each other a little. Could I ask you to please just take a moment to greet each other and introduce yourselves to one another by name. Thank you for doing that. Before we begin, please take a moment to turn off your cell phones or switch them to silent mode so that we can all focus on Jesus. Just like the disciples on the road to Emmaus who recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread, may we always recognize the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And now let's pray this prayer of St. Teresa of Calcutta. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, help us to spread your fragrance everywhere we go. Flood our souls with your spirit and life. Penetrate and possess our whole being so utterly that our lives may only be a radiance of yours. Shine through us and be so in us that every soul we come in contact with may feel your presence in our soul. Let them look up and see no longer us, but only you. 
Let us praise you in the way you love best by shining on those around us. Let us preach you without preaching, not by words, but by our example, by the sympathetic influence of what we do, by the evident fullness of the love our hearts bear to you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass will begin shortly. Thank you very much. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Ravina. What do you ask of God's church? Faith. What does faith offer you? Eternal life. This is eternal life, to know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Christ has been raised from the dead and appointed by God as the Lord of life and ruler of all things, seen and unseen. You would not ask for this life or seek baptism today unless you had already come to know Christ and wanted to become his disciple. And I ask you, have you listened to Christ's word and resolved to keep his commandments? Have you shared our way of life and joined with us in prayer? Have you done all these things with the intention of becoming a Christian? I have. 
Marita, you are the candidate's godmother. As God is your witness, do you consider her worthy to be admitted today to the sacraments of Christian initiation? I do. You have spoken in Ravina's favor. Are you prepared to help her to serve Christ by your words and example? I am. Let us pray. Conrad. What do you ask of God's church for Conrad? Baptism. In asking for baptism for your child, you are undertaking the responsibility of raising him in the faith so that, keeping God's commandments, he may love the Lord and his neighbor as Christ has taught us. Do you understand this responsibility? We do. Godmother, are you ready to help the parents in this parents of this child in their duty? I am. Conrad, the Church of God receives you with great joy. In her name, I sign you with the cross of Christ our Savior. Then after me, your parents and godparents will do the same.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At the temple gate, Peter addressed the people. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 
and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this we may be sure that we know him, if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar, and in such a person, the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this, we may be sure that we are in him. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples told the eleven and their companions what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hand and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Sorry, everyone. There is a car blocking. It's a Honda CRV, uh, PG713G. It's blocking where? All the parking, the whole parking lot? Anyone in the school parking lot can't get out. So if uh, Honda CRV, you just, you could please move that, please, please, please. Thanks. So on a scale of uh, one to five, how much mercy would you say you've received from God the Father during your life? So I'll give you a description of the scale. One would be, I haven't experienced much love from God. Two, God has helped me during life. Three, I've had moments in which I've received special gifts from God. Four, God has been amazingly merciful towards me. And five, God's mercy radi has radically changed my life. So this is a prayerful uh, self-reflection. We're just trying to understand better how we have experienced God's mercy. And then especially if we've received a lot, then we want to pass that on to others. So that's really what we're focusing on uh, today. So don't worry about, you can't get a wrong number. It's just your own analysis of your experience so for example in my life when I was a kid growing up I was a one that's just what I experienced and then when I was 13 I started experiencing more of God's love then I responded kept on going back and forth love response love response and when I was 16 in confession I just felt God's mercy forgiving all of my sins so it radically changed my life so there is a progression it all depends on God's timing we talked about that on Easter Sunday God has a timing for all of us. It also depends on our uh, response. So could I just ask, does everyone think they have a number that applies to them? You know which number is yours. Now could I ask if you're willing, just for a show of hands, I'm not going to ask about one or two. There's nothing wrong with being a one or two, but I just don't want anyone to be self-conscious. I'm just going to ask about three, four, or five. So could I ask? Who here would say three best represents them? Hands? That's great. Thanks, everyone. What about four? Who's a four? Awesome. And finally, who's five? And would the fives report to my office after mass, please? <laughs> Just kidding. No. You don't have to. Just joking. Okay. So we're following up last week's homily about God's infinite perfect mercy. And again, we're trying to focus on if he gives us mercy, we want to share it with others. So the gospel begins. The two disciples told the 11 apostles and their companions what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is one of the most important post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. So what happens is the two disciples, one is named Cleopas, we don't know the name of the other. They're walking away from Jerusalem. They're dejected because the one they love, Jesus, has died. And then Jesus walks beside them. He pulls up beside them, but they don't recognize him. So he starts explaining things to them. He helps them to open up their minds to understand that he's really risen. And it says that they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. What's the breaking of the bread? The mass. They recognize him during the celebration of mass. So they're, it says that their hearts are, are burning within them. They're so excited. They get it. They've received that mercy. So they turn around, go back to Jerusalem, tell the 11 apostles and their companions. And what happens during that? While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. I've mentioned this theological point before. Whenever we talk about Jesus, he becomes present. So whenever you share what God has done in your life, it's like you're actually giving Jesus to other people. But the disciples need reassurance that Jesus is real. It says, they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. So for them, they can accept that Jesus is a risen spirit, but it doesn't come naturally to accept that he's got a body. 
That's why he, asked, he, asked, he shows them his hands and feet and he eats something in front of them to convince them, no, it's the same body that died on the cross that is now resurrected. So the resurrection is a real historical fact. And in the same way, the mercy that we have received, that's a real historical fact. Just like we have to share the resurrection, we have to share what God has done in our lives. And he said to them, thus it is written, that the Christ is to suffer and, ri and to rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations. You are witnesses of these things. In a trial, a legal trial, what does the witness do? The witness doesn't argue the case. That's the lawyer's job. The witness just states the facts. That's what Jesus is asking us. Just state the facts. And one of the facts, one of the most important facts we want to touch on is that Jesus died for us. He loves us so much that he died on the cross for all of us. And he's risen to give us eternal life. So it's natural we hear this. We might be thinking, who, me? I'm supposed to do that? And Jesus is saying to all of us, yes, you. Most of us know, uh, two weeks ago at the Easter Vigil, we had six adult baptisms with the nine uh, baptism, baptisms of their children. We're just going through every week, we're going to show one testimony from each person who was baptized. So today we have Doris Jew's uh, testimony, and she's speaking on behalf of her children, uh, Zoe and Charlotte. Hello. Hi, my name is Doris. I was baptized um, during the Easter, and... Um, I'm still feeling great about that. And it's unforgettable a memory of me and my children because we got baptized together and with another um, five pair of uh, mothers and children. So uh, I was still feeling so touching, unbelievable, and I'm part of the um, family member of God. And uh, I'm still remember uh, when Father Justin put the water from my head. Wow, I feel it's a new journey of my life. During the government um, of um, the confirmation, I can't control my tear. It was just so great. And I feel I'm so small and I am um, not perfect, but how can I discern the love and the gift from God? And that is unbelievable. And I'm, I'm still feeling fantastic. And after the baptize, my husband asked me, uh, actually, what do you feel now? Honestly, I'm, I feel the same. I mean, I'm the same Doris. My personality not going to change. <laughs> but I still love you, except my husband. I still love my children. But I knew uh, that after that day, during this week, whenever I did my decision or make any decision or do something before I would think, oh, is it this my, I mean, Jesus was going to like it if I make this decision, is he going to happy with that? So that start from that, I knew that I'm following his direction and I'm glad for that. And I wish my children also can doing that. Many people uh, from the church help me a lot, um, especially Denise, Ivan, because of them, um, starting the Alva with me. And that is a big stepping stone for me to go back to home. And then later on, then we start the faith study. Um, and then also Dick and Andrew help me a lot of the RCIA and taught us a lot about what is and who is Jesus actually. And of course, there's many people, Ivy um, from Alpha and of other family, um, um, Jennifer, Vivian, Janice, because they are, we are really good connection. We're helping each other. So, um, and also, of course, many people. I'm Father Justin, thank you.
Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Doris. So I want to give you now six uh, simple reasons why we should share our testimony. Number one, when you tell people about Jesus, they see you as a satisfied customer. When they look at me, they see me as a professional salesman. <laughs> so please, they give you more credibility. Do your part. Number two, if we had the cure to cancer, wouldn't it be wrong not to share it? So we have the cure to spiritual cancer. So we should share it. Number three, why do you think you were given God's mercy? It wasn't just for you. It's meant for others. Number four, when love is kept, it dies. We've mentioned before in Israel, the Dead Sea is a lake. And it's the lowest land-based elevation on earth. So all the water goes in, it can't get out. And because of that, the water becomes stagnant. Nothing living can, can survive in the Dead Sea. In the same way, if we only receive God's mercy and never give it, we will become selfish. We will spiritually die. Number five, love is the only thing in the world that increases when, when given away. So when we give away money, our money decreases, but not with love. When love is given away, it increases. And finally, six, joy increases when it's shared. When we tell other people about the joy we've received, they, they're happy, and then we become more happy. So because of the power of sharing God's mercy, it touches the heart. Just let you know, since the begin, beginning of 2024, we decided we're going to show one testimony uh, per month. But because we've had all these baptisms, we're actually showing more at this point right now. And a big thank you to all of you if you've already shared a testimony. We've been doing this for over 10 years now. So if you've already shared, thank you. And today, uh, if you come downstairs for Sunday brunch, free food, we're going to do uh, something we're going to try something just fun. At your table, if you, if you want to use it, there's absolutely no pressure. It's completely optional. We've got a discussion question. It says, what is one recent experience of mercy that comes to mind that you can share with others? It doesn't have to be big. It could be small. It could just be about how God has loved you recently, how he's taken care of you, any joy that specifically comes from him. So it'd be really quite beautiful in our discussions downstairs. Can you imagine what would come up just to hear? It's very edifying. So to finish off, um, I've mentioned my father a few times in the past, and I'm just mentioning him now in preparation for next week's homily. My, uh, my dad's whole life, he felt like God never gave him anything. My dad said God never gave him what he wanted, and he never felt loved by his parents. Uh, when he was in his 50s, my dad was humbled by what was going on in his life. It wasn't going well. And he also, to his credit, he humbled himself. And he started experiencing that God was working in his life, and this was great. So he kept on experiencing more and more love from God, and eventually started reading this book by St. Padre Pio, this one. And in the book, uh, St. Padre Pio actually told the author... It's a beautiful story. I'll share with you another time. He told the author, thank God always, no matter what, even in the midst of disasters. That really spoke to my dad's heart. So my dad bought a bunch of these books and he started giving them out. And when my dad died in 2007, um, my family and I, we just felt that we put on his graves, on his tombstone, thank God always we felt that would be the best message possible from our dad's, from dad's life. So I think my dad ex had a level four experience of God's mercy. And to his credit, he shared what he had been given. So whenever we think, like, Jesus, who, me? I, I'm supposed to do it? I please, please hear Jesus say back to you, yes, you, you are my witness.
Let us bring our needs to our Heavenly Father. That all people experience the Father's infinite love for them, while at the same time open their hearts to Him, we pray to the Lord. Accepting that Jesus is calling us to be his witnesses, may we simply state the facts of how he loves us to the point of death and how he has given us life to the full. We pray to the Lord. Lord, That our Sunday brunches be times of joy and community where the Holy Spirit uplifts and invigorates invigorates us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more courage, so that we give away love to others, not for our sake, but for theirs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now ask the saints and angels to intercede for us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us. St. John the Baptist. Pray for us. St. Joseph. Pray for us. St. Peter and St. Paul. Pray for us. St. Catherine of Alexandria. Pray for us. St. Patricia, St. Patrick. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to the Lord our God. Father of mercies, who sent your only Son to rescue us from the slavery of sin and to give us freedom as your children, we pray for your servant, Ravina. She has faced the temptations of this world and been tested by the cunning of Satan. Now she acknowledges her sinfulness and professes her faith. By the passion and resurrection of your Son, deliver her from the powers of darkness and strengthen her through the grace of Christ that she may journey through life shielded by your unfailing care. We humbly beseech you to free this child from original sin, to make him the temple of your glory, and to grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in him, through Christ our Lord. Dear friends, let us pray to God for our sister Ravina, who is asking for baptism. He has called Ravina, Ravina and brought her to this moment. May he grant Ravina light and strength to follow Christ with a resolute heart and to profess the faith of the church. Let us also pray that the Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on this child by water and the Holy Spirit. Praise to you, God, Almighty God and Father. Praise to you, Almighty God and Father, for you have created water to cleanse and to give life. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's only Son, for you offered yourself on the cross, that in the blood and water flowing from your side, and through your death and resurrection, the church might be born. Blessed be God. Praise you, God, the Holy Spirit, for you anointed Christ at his baptism in the waters of the Jordan, that we might all be baptized in you. Blessed be God. You have called your children, Ravina and Conrad, to this cleansing water, that they may share in the faith of your church and have eternal life. By the mystery of this consecrated water, lead them to a new and spiritual birth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ravina, before you are baptized, reject Satan and profess your faith here in the presence of God's church. And dear parents and godparents, Through the sacrament of baptism, the child you have presented is about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring him up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow in him day by day. 
If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin and profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which children are baptized. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried? rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ravina Catherine, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. and godmother, sorry. Is it your will, therefore, that Conrad should be receive baptism in the faith of the church, which we have all professed with you? It is. Conrad Patrick, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation so that joined to his people, you may remain members of Christ, priest, prophet, and king unto eternal life. Amen. Ravina, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment. and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Conrad, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. May this white garment be a sign to you of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring it unstained into eternal life. Marita, please come forward to give to the newly baptized the light of Christ. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Parents and Godmother, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that your child, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light and persevering in the faith may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. May the Lord Jesus, 
who made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, grant that you may soon receive his word with your ears and profess the faith with your lips to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. Ravina, born again in Christ by baptism, you have become a member of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to be baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active, an um, active member of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for this is adopted daughter, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon her to confirm her with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform her more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought this, your servant, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing her from sin, send upon her, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give her the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill her with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Catherine of Alexandria, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of fly rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you be seated for a moment, please? So we're offering a five-part series. It's called The Biblical Walk Through the Mass by Dr. Edward Sri. So here's the video. The number one place to go if I want my heart to be changed, if I want my heart to be healed of its selfishness, of its pride, of all the things that keep me from loving like Jesus, the number one place to go is in the Mass where I encounter sacrificial love himself. From the outside, the Mass seems like just a bunch of rituals. We stand, we kneel, we make the sign of the cross. We go through all the motions, but our mind wanders and our heart is not always in it. But what if I were to bring you inside the Mass? What if I were to tell you that all the prayers, the rituals and symbols are charged with great significance, that every little detail in the liturgy has meaning, that it's all rooted in scripture? If we can understand the biblical background to all that we say, all that we do, all of the rituals and all the prayers, we can then enter into the liturgy so much more profoundly and experience something deeper in the Mass. All the parts of the Mass help us to encounter Jesus' love for us more profoundly so that we can be transformed by that love, so that we can be changed into Christ's likeness from one degree of glory to another. Yeah, so we're starting that May 2nd for five weeks till May 30th. 
uh, you can register online or talk to Alex at the back. Only 50 spots available for sure. I know more than 20 have already been taken up. So just to let you know. This Wednesday at 10 a.m. we're hosting, um, our school is hosting a grandparents and seniors tea. So all grandparents are welcome towards that this Wednesday, 10 a.m. Thank you everyone for wearing your name tags. It's an act of charity. We've got Sunday brunch downstairs, free food. And finally, we praise God for Ravina and Conrad's baptism. <clears throat> So I think everyone here at the 10 a.m. Mass would recognize the whole family. I think it's been about a two-year journey. Yeah, two or three. Amazing. So it's such a joy for our whole family. Let's greet them at the back and pray for them. Let us stand, please. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.